Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Inkscape version 1.3 to create a cutout version of a tree of life. For this I use basic shapes, the pen tool, the spirograph option and tapered strokes. I start by setting my document up. It's going to be 300 by 300 millimeters for a 280 by 280 millimeter design. I start with a circle in that size, center it to the page and duplicate it to create a ring. Scale the duplicate down and then combine both of them via the pass difference. One thing to keep in mind when working on more complex designs is to save right from the start and save often. I start with the tree in a separate layer using a rectangle for the trunk and the pen tool to do the branches. I turned the spirograph option on which allows me to create nice swirly lines. I add the taper stroke pass effect to that line. The Taper gives me two extra nodes. You can move these red diamond nodes with the node tool to define the distance of the taper from the start and the end of your line. The version 1.3 did not like something I did. It took a few goes to get it working. There's definitely an issue when the two taper nodes join. I was fine adjusting and moving nodes, but deleting nodes within a pass that had a spiral graph and a taper connected to it, the program would crash on me. In order to avoid that and get the design done, I left the taper for later and went in with the pen tool to create all the branches first. As I'm not working with the sketch, the idea is to fill the empty space within the ring. Duplicating and reusing existing lines is faster than creating new ones. I duplicate shapes from one part, mirror them, rotate them, adjust them to fit the space they are going to be in. The spiral pass is an awesome tool, even though the notes might be all over the place, the pass of the spiral is calculated perfectly. With most of the branches in place, I start adding the tapered stroke. I set the width of the stroke and adjust the taper of the end of the line. That way the branches get thinner towards the center of the spiral. Seeing this design is meant to be a cutout, all the lines should connect, don't leave gaps or floating elements. With all the initial branches now having a tapered stroke, there are still areas that feel empty and need filling. So I use a small swirl and copy it into those areas. There should be some empty space for the birds and the leaves that are going to be added to the design. Don't overcrowd it, but don't leave too many empty spaces either. You might have noticed that I'm trying to place as many of the curves to connect to the ring. That gives the whole cutout design more stability if the tree is firmly connected to the ring. At this stage, I save the file and create a new version. I will convert the tapered strokes into paths, which I can then edit and adjust. 
Stroke to pass or object to pass doesn't seem to work. I get really weird results. The tapered stroke are being ignored and I just get the width of the stroke with some weird alteration. Alternatively, there's always the save as plain SVG. I save the file as a plain SVG because that format does not have any path effects tapered or power stroke will be converted to notes. Once I save it as that and bring in the plain SVG version, I now have a outside shape of my pass, which is exactly what I want. I can use those and combine the objects via pass union to create one pass of the whole tree. Selecting the layer was not working because the boolean operation does not work on layers. So instead I just selected sections of my tree and combined those. I select a few of the shapes and use the pass union to create one pass from those. Then I select more and the already combined pass do the same thing until all my shapes are one pass. You can see in the layer panel that I now just have one pass for the whole tree. The reason behind this is that I can now go in with the node tool and adjust the parts that I did not flesh out in the beginning, which is the bottom of the trunk and the connections of the branches to the main trunk. I use the node tool, add a few more nodes, curve the parts that I need to cover the area and connect the trunk to the ring. To match the level of detail and intricate design of the branches, I add a few circles to the bottom of the trunk. I combine them via union and subtract them from my tree shape. I use the node tool to move these ellipses away from the outer ring. This way I can maintain nicely shaped ellipses when I combine the tree with the ring later on. With the base of the tree fixed, it's now time to adjust the branches. They do look odd when the angles are too square, so I go with a more organic curve. I try to avoid really sharp corners or odd angles where one side is dead straight and then the curve does not flow naturally. Now it's time for the next element. The leaves will be added. I create a separate layer for them. I will combine them later on, but for the time being, it's just easier to keep things in separate layers, lock layers when they get in the way. I can just focus on the one layer I'm working on. The leaf itself is just a circle converted to a pass and then modified using the node tool. I also move the pivot point to the bottom. I create a cluster of leaves, duplicate it and position it and then adjust the individual leaves.
Once I place them, I recolor them in the matching black because it will be one shape in the end, but it's just easier to see the shapes when they have a different color. Next up are the birds. I take one of the leaf shapes as the base for my bird. I use a different color to make the birds stand out later when I place them in the scene. The leaf makes a great wing, a circle added makes the head, a duplicate of the wing gives me the beak. As you can see it's not about creating something complex but using the elements you have to combine them to look like something a lot more complex. I duplicate the wing shape to create the body and the tail feathers and another circle will make the eye from just two shapes both based on a circle we have a little bird that will decorate our tree of life I add another shape to distinguish the wing from the body making sure that it does not cut too much it will just be a cut within the body shape I use the boolean operations path difference for the eye and the white shape of the wing and then the boolean union to combine the whole bird into one path. I can now place the bird inside my tree design, mirror it, rotate it, make it fit, adjust space where I need it, being everything is still separate as far as the leaves go. I can remove leaves to add the birds. When it comes to editing the tree, I use the node tool, delete nodes and adjust the curves to match. In this case, I shorten the spiral a little bit to give the bird some space. I zoom out a lot to check that the whole design has the same level of detail and there are no fluttered areas. There's still one part that I need to fix, that's the section with the two birds. I use the node tool to move this branch and give the bird a bump a little bit more room so it's not touching the branch above. It's easy to fix by deleting nodes or hiding the problem like the bend in the bottom of this branch by placing another leaf. After saving this version I go in and combine all the birds and all the leaves into one path and then combine everything with the tree and the ring. The result is one path for the whole design. I just forgot one little detail, the little hole at the very top, so I add a circle, set it to pass difference to be cut out of the design after aligning it. And there we have it, a tree of life ready to be cut out. As you can see when I change the color, it is one pass, there are no floating elements. So this design is good to go. For this design I used basic shapes, the pen tool with the spiral pass turned on and the pass effect tapered stroke. I combined the shapes using the boolean operations, union and difference 
to turn the separate elements into one pass. Whenever you work on a slightly more complex design, remember to save early and save often. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification, leave a like and a comment in the section below to let me know what you'd like to see on this channel and I will see you again soon.